I ran the exact same 50 prompts through both Sora 2 and Grok Imagine, and one of them completely failed at something you'd think would be basic, while the other one shocked me by nailing things I thought were impossible. And here's the twist. The tool everyone's hyping up as the best actually performed worse for most real-world use cases. In fact, if you're creating content for social media, you might be choosing the wrong tool entirely. Welcome back to bitbias.ai where we do the research so you don't have to. Join our community of AI enthusiasts. Click the newsletter link in the description for weekly analysis delivered straight to your inbox. So in this video, I'm breaking down exactly what I discovered. The real differences that matter, not just the marketing hype. We're comparing video quality, prompt accuracy, speed, and pricing, so you'll know exactly which tool is worth your money. Let's start with the biggest surprise I found about video quality. Video quality. The surprising truth. Here's what nobody's telling you about these two tools. Everyone assumes Sora 2 is automatically better because it's from OpenAI and costs more. And yeah, when it comes to pure cinematic quality, Sora 2 is stunning. But better quality doesn't always mean better for your content. I tested both with this prompt. A barista crafting latte art in a cozy cafe during golden hour, with steam rising and sunlight filtering through the window. Sora 2 gave me something that looked like it was shot on a red camera. The lighting was gorgeous, the steam physics were perfect, and you could see individual coffee bubbles forming in the crema. Absolutely beautiful. But here's the twist. When I posted both versions on Instagram to test engagement, the Grok Imagine version got 34% more saves and shares. Why? Because it had this vibrant, saturated, almost illustrative quality that popped on mobile screens. It grabbed attention in the scroll in a way that the more realistic Sora 2 version didn't. This is the fundamental difference you need to understand. Sora 2 is chasing photorealism and cinematic quality. Every frame looks like it could be from a Christopher Nolan film. The textures are detailed, the lighting is sophisticated, and longer sequences maintain consistency beautifully. If you zoom in on a Sora 2 video, you'll see fabric weaves and wood grain, micro details that sell the realism. Grok Imagine, on the other hand, optimizes for what I call scroll-stopping quality. It's brighter, more saturated, more energetic. Think Pixar versus live-action cinema. Both are high quality, but they serve completely different purposes. Where Sora 2 really dominates is temporal consistency in longer videos. I generated 60-second sequences with both tools. Sora 2 kept characters, lighting, and environments consistent throughout. A red jacket stayed a red jacket for all 60 seconds. Grok Imagine occasionally had textures shift slightly or lighting that didn't quite track across the full sequence. But for short-form content under 15 seconds, which is most social media content, those consistency issues rarely show up. And Grok Imagine's punchy visual style actually performs better on platforms where you need to grab attention fast. The bottom line? If you're creating narrative content, client presentations, or anything where people are watching on large screens with full attention, Sora 2's cinematic quality wins. If you're creating social media content, marketing materials, or anything designed for mobile viewing and quick consumption, Grok Imagine's style might actually serve you better, despite being technically less photorealistic. Prompt understanding. Who actually listens? This is where my testing revealed something genuinely surprising. I gave both tools this complex prompt. A cyberpunk street vendor selling holographic flowers at night, with neon signs reflecting in puddles, flying cars in the background, and a stray cat watching from a fire escape. Sora 2 nailed the overall composition. The scene was gorgeous. The spatial relationships made sense and everything I asked for was present. But those holographic flowers looked more like glowing regular flowers. Beautiful, but not quite what I asked for. Grok Imagine's version was less photorealistic overall, but those holographic flowers were perfect, translucent with scan lines and that flickering projector quality. It understood the sci-fi concept, not just the literal words. This pattern repeated across dozens of tests. 
Gruck imagined consistently understood internet culture, meme aesthetics, and contemporary visual references better. When I asked for Vaporwave Sunset or Liminal Space Shopping Mall, Grok nailed the vibe while Sora gave me something technically correct but culturally off. Sora too showed its strength with abstract emotional tones. Prompts like the quiet determination of an athlete training at dawn gave me results that captured mood and atmosphere in ways that felt almost poetic. Grok Imagine gave me the literal elements but missed some emotional nuance. For technical camera direction, Sora 2 was more precise. Slow push in, then rack focus to the background. Sora executed that like a trained cinematographer. Grok approximated the movement, but interpreted technical directions more loosely. Here's what this means practically. If your content needs to feel culturally current, reference internet aesthetics, or connect with younger audiences familiar with digital culture, Grok Imagine's cultural fluency is a massive advantage. If you're creating branded content, narrative work, or anything requiring precise emotional tone and filmmaking technique, Sora 2's deeper understanding wins. Speed and pricing. The real cost of creation. Let's talk about what actually affects your daily workflow. Grok Imagine generates a typical 10-second video in 20, 45 seconds. Sora 2 takes 2 to 10 minutes for the same clip. That might not sound dramatic, but it changes everything about how you work. With Grok Imagine, I found myself being wildly experimental. Crazy idea? Let's try it. It'll take 30 seconds. That tight feedback loop made me a better prompt writer because I could iterate rapidly. I'd generate something, see what worked, adjust, and try again immediately. Sora 2's longer wait times made me front load my thinking. I'd spend five minutes crafting the perfect prompt because I knew each generation would cost me five to 10 minutes of waiting. This isn't necessarily worse. It encouraged more thoughtful prompting, but it definitely limits creative exploration. Here's the math that matters. In one hour of focused work, I could generate and refine 40, 50 videos with Grok Imagine. With Sora 2, I might get six to 10 videos in that same hour. If you're creating daily content or testing multiple concepts, that difference is massive. Now for pricing. Sora 2 costs significantly more per generation, and those costs add up fast if you're producing volume. For professional work where you're charging clients or building a portfolio, the investment makes sense. But I found myself being conservative with Sora 2 really thinking through each generation because of the credit cost. Grok Imagine's pricing is designed for volume. For the same monthly costs that gave me careful, limited use of Sora 2, I could generate almost unlimited content with Grok Imagine. This makes it perfect if you're building a content business, posting daily, or in the learning phase where you need lots of practice. The value equation is clear. Sora 2 is worth the premium if quality directly impacts your results. Client work, brand campaigns, anything where production value matters. Grok. Imagine offers better value if you need volume, speed, or are creating for platforms where quantity and consistency matter more than absolute perfection. One more factor, accessibility. Sora 2 sometimes has wait lists and capacity limits during peak times. I had days where I wanted to work but couldn't get access. Grok Imagine has been consistently accessible with minimal wait times. Use cases. Which tool for your project? Let me give you the practical playbook I've developed after weeks of testing both tools in real-world scenarios. Social media content. Grok. Imagine wins decisively. The speed lets you create a week's worth of content in an afternoon. That vibrant visual style is perfect for mobile viewing. I generated daily Instagram content for a month using only Grok Imagine. Different concepts every day, testing various approaches, all within a reasonable budget. Trying to do that with Sora 2 would have bankrupted me. YouTube videos. This depends on your content type. For educational content with short insert clips and B-roll, use Grok Imagine. The speed and cost let you generate dozens of visual examples to illustrate your points. 
But if you're creating long-form content where video segments need to maintain consistency across several minutes, Sora 2's superior temporal consistency becomes critical. Client work and marketing. Sora 2 justifies its premium here. When you're presenting to stakeholders or representing a brand, that extra visual polish matters. I created a mock product launch campaign with both tools. The Sora 2 version had that aspirational premium quality that made clients excited. The Grok Imagine version looked good but didn't have the same wow factor. Film and narrative projects, Sora 2 dominates. The cinematic quality, consistent visual language, and ability to maintain character and environment integrity across longer sequences make it essential for storytelling. However, use Grok Imagine for pre-production, storyboarding, concept visualization, rapid scene testing, then level up your final shots with Sora 2. Meme content and internet culture, Grok. Imagine crushes this category. Its understanding of contemporary visual language makes it perfect for content that needs to feel current. I tried generating meme-style content with Sora 2, and it always felt slightly off, like watching your dad try to be cool. Educational content. For institutions creating hours of training materials, Grok Imagine's speed and pricing make it ideal for generating visual examples and demonstrations at scale. The slightly less photorealistic style actually works well because it reads clearly as instructional rather than trying to be documentary. Here's my hybrid workflow strategy. Use Grok. Imagine for exploration and rough drafts. Generate multiple concepts, test different approaches, figure out what works. Once you've identified your best ideas, level them up with Sora 2 for final production. This gives you creative freedom plus premium final results. Limitations. What they won't tell you. Let's talk about what these tools actually can't do, because understanding limitations is just as important as knowing strengths. Sora 2's biggest problems. Text rendering is still broken. Anytime your prompt includes readable text, signs, labels, screens, there's a 60% chance it'll be garbled nonsense. I tried generating a scene with a book showing visible text and got beautiful gibberish. If your content requires readable text, this is a deal breaker. Human faces and hands remain challenging. Close-ups can have subtle, uncanny valley issues, slightly wrong proportions, eyes that don't quite track right. Hands doing complex movements sometimes morph weirdly. It's better than earlier AI, but not perfect. Complex object interactions break down. Simple stuff works great, picking up a cup, walking through a door, but threading a needle, tying intricate knots, or manipulating small objects with precision, the AI shows its limits with results that are close, but not quite right. That five to 10 minute generation time affects your creative psychology. When each attempt costs you 10 minutes, you become risk averse and stop experimenting. I found myself avoiding creative risks because failure felt expensive in time. Grok imagines key weaknesses. Stylistic consistency across multiple related videos requires careful prompt engineering. I tried creating a five-part series and had to regenerate multiple times because the aesthetic shifted between installments. If you need a cohesive series, this takes extra work. Fine detail resolution doesn't hold up under scrutiny. Zoom in and textures become simplified, small objects lose definition. For wide shots, this is fine. For detailed close-ups, it's noticeable. Complex lighting gets simplified. Multiple light sources, colored lighting, or dramatic cinematic lighting techniques often get reduced to simpler versions. If lighting is critical to your vision, this is limiting. Shared limitations, shared. Neither handles sound. You get silent clips requiring audio in post. Both struggle beyond 60 seconds, with quality degrading in longer generations. Camera movements lack the intentionality of human-operated cameras. Specific brands or products can't be accurately represented due to copyright and training limitations. Understanding these limitations helps you work with the tools effectively instead of fighting them. Both are powerful creative aids that still require human judgment and post-production to deliver professional results. The verdict, your decision made simple.
After everything I've tested, here's the framework that makes this decision crystal clear. Choose Sora 2 if you're creating client work where quality impacts your professional reputation. You need longer sequences with consistent visual language. You're working on narrative or cinematic projects. You have budget for premium results. You value craftsmanship over speed. Your content will be viewed on large screens with full attention. Choose Gruck. Imagine if you're producing high volume social media content. You need rapid iteration and fast feedback loops. Your content needs contemporary, culturally current aesthetics. Budget constraints make Sora 2's pricing prohibitive. You're learning and need lots of practice attempts. Your content is designed for mobile viewing and quick consumption. My actual recommendation, don't choose exclusively. Use both strategically. I use Grok Imagine 80% of the time for daily content creation. It's my reliable workhorse. But when I have important client work or portfolio pieces, I shift to Sora 2 and give it the attention it deserves. For beginners, start with Grok Imagine. The faster iteration helps you learn prompt engineering quickly, the lower cost means you can afford mistakes, and the less intimidating interface makes it easy to just start creating. Add Sora 2 later when you have specific projects requiring higher quality. For established creators with client demands and existing budgets, Sora 2 might be your starting point, with Grok Imagine added later for supplementary work and rapid prototyping. The AI video space evolves incredibly fast. Stay flexible, keep experimenting, and be ready to adjust as these tools improve. So there's your complete breakdown. Both tools are remarkable. Your best choice depends on your specific needs, workflow, and budget. Drop a comment telling me which tool you're choosing and what content you're planning to create. I read every single comment and love hearing how creators are using these tools in unique ways. If you want a follow-up showing side-by-side -side examples of specific prompts, let me know. Should I do deep dive tutorials on maximizing either tool? Your feedback shapes what I create next. Subscribe if you want more AI tool comparisons, because this space moves fast and I'm here to help you navigate it without wasting money on the wrong tools. The best tool is the one that actually helps you bring your ideas to life. Keep creating, keep experimenting, and I'll see you in the next one.